Well, welcome to Live Live, a place where we meet up to receive motivational, inspirational, and activational strategies for those challenging and changing life moments. I am your host, Keeler Bryson, and today I have a wonderful subject again that will challenge us on being all that we are called to be so that we can live live every day. Hey, guys, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you were able to get some football in, get some outdoor activities in, and just enjoying time off from your job. Well, you know what time it is. It's, that it's Monday evening, and as usual, we're back on our schedule of keeping ourselves motivated, keeping ourselves groomed and, and ready for that big moment uh, of experiencing what God would have us to carry out in our lives and just, you know, coming together so that we can just fellowship and then get ideas and get inspired from each other. Tonight, I want to talk about a subject that I think is very, very thought-provoking. I believe this subject will get you to thinking on how you utilize the things that God has given you so that you can have more of what you should be living and experiencing. My question to you tonight is, are you resourceful? Yeah, think about that. Are you resourceful or are you wasteful? Uh, Most people can answer that pretty quickly, I believe. When we all think about it, we know if we're resourceful or whether we're wasteful. Some of us are more resourceful or wasteful than others. But at any rate, tonight's topic is to basically cause us to pay a little bit more attention to the things that we um, possess and to the things that God has given into our hands to be responsible for. So tonight's topic is entitled Being Wise with Your Resources. Being Wise with Your Resources. In other words, we want to be a people that's resourceful. We want to be a people who is not wasteful. And in order to do that, we've got to begin to think on how we can become more resourceful and be conscious of the things that are considered wasteful, wasteful behavior, waste or wasteful mentality, and so forth. You know, when we are resourceful, I believe God will send more resources to us. And this thought is supported basically by the parable of the talents in the New Testament. You remember the story about the three guys who had been given um, their master's possession, and they were charged with the responsibility of basically turning what they were given into more. And two other guys in that parable, they did just that. And But the third guy, he didn't. He was wasteful with his. And in the story, uh, it further talks about how the two guys who were resourceful, how they doubled what they were given, and as a result, uh, they were given more because of their resourcefulness. So that's where I got the principle from that when we are resourceful, God will begin to bless us with more because we're proven, we've proven that we are responsible, that we're not going to waste it, that we're going to double it, increase it, and just cause it to grow. You know, I believe God is a God who doesn't like anything wasted. He knows how to turn something Uh, nothing into something, and and, and we are gifted with his DNA, so we should have that same ability to be able to turn nothing into something. Being resourceful produces increase because we become gifted with the ability to stretch, save, and sustain. You know, if you save more, you're going to live more. And I know right now in this economy, a lot of times when you say save, people look at you like, save, really? You know, a lot of people just feel like I don't have the money. I don't have anything left over at the end of the month and sometimes before the end of the month to pay, um, uh, make a contribution to my savings account. But you know what? That's why I'm presenting tonight's topic because 
I believe that you can get some sort of savings out of your resources. You just got to become more aware and conscious of your resources and how to maximize them. Even if it's putting just five, ten, fifteen dollars away a month, if you can just save something, that's better than nothing. You know, most of us have heard stories of grandmothers who they didn't have a whole lot. You know, they didn't have a whole lot of money. I know back when I was a child, my grandmothers, they didn't work. Yet they had what they needed. I don't remember a time of them not having something. They always had the things that were needed to basically live, you know, and to survive. And so I believe that those people back then, they knew how to be resourceful. You know why? Because many of them had gone through hard times, tough times. And when you've gone through hard times and tough times, one thing that I have learned from being in a hard time and a tough place is that it teaches you how to be resourceful. Because when you only have a limited amount of income or resources to work with, you become even more conscious of how you can stretch it, how you can save it, how you can have surplus and how you can sustain it. Because you know that if you don't be resourceful, you may be hungry, you may be sitting in the dark, or you may be evicted. And so as a result of experiencing a financial tight place, we learn in those times how to be resourceful. You know, most of us don't like being in that tight place. We don't like being financially strapped. But a lot of times that was the opportune time where God is birthing in us the spirit of resourcefulness to teach us and train us and discipline us how to increase what he's given us, how to identify what we do have and how we can turn that into something more. And so I believe that when we're resourceful, it births creativity in us. We begin to get creative and ideas of what we can do, what we can make. We look around our houses to see what do we have that we can use to make money with. We create something out of nothing when we're resourceful. We create more out of less, and we always have leftovers and and surplus. You can always tell when a person is resourceful because you can see them work with very little and make it stretch and make it do wonderful things, marvelous things, and almost and sometimes even miraculous things. And it's amazing what we can do when we really, really sit down and think of how we can make something stretch. And I believe that when we have a heart and a desire to be resourceful, God will anoint us to be even more resourceful, and we will become a person. People will be wondering, how did you get that? Why is it that you never broke? I know you're only on limited income, and I know you've been unemployed, and I know that your wife probably, you know, wasn't working. But yet y'all survived. Nothing was turned off. You never went hungry. You know why? Because we were resourceful is what that person can say. And as a result, God blessed us to meet the needs that needed to be met and to have surplus left over. And, you know, when you're resourceful, you can find yourself doing better than the people that's working two jobs. You know why? Because God's hand of resourcefulness is upon you. When we're resourceful, our intent is to get the most benefit in the most efficient and economical way. That's basically what resourcefulness is, getting the most benefit in the most efficient and economical way. You know, we're going to be wise with our resources. We've got to first figure out what does it mean to be wise. Well, if you're going to be wise with your resources, that means you're going to be smart. You're going to be clever, and we know that clever means witty. You're able to think quickly on how to transform nothing into something. When you are wise with your resources, you're prudent. Prudent means you're careful and you're farsighted. You know, you're not just going to go out here and just spend every. When you're when you're wise, every little increase that you get, you don't spend it right away. You may sit there, let it sit there, and then you pray and ask God to show you how and what to do with this increase. And you're farsighted when you're wise, which means that you're thinking uh, in the future. You're thinking long term. You know, you're not thinking short term where, okay, I'm just going to go and spend this real quick, and then I'm going to be happy because I got what I uh, desire to get right now. 
And a lot of times when we have that, um, when we don't delay gratification, a lot of times it will put us in a situation that's harmful. And, and if we're going to be wise with our resources, there are going to be times when we have to have some delayed gratification because at that time it may not be the best financial move for us. And so when you're wise, you are careful. You're far-sighted. You're thinking down the road. You're thinking about next month. You're thinking about the next six months. You're thinking about that rainy day. And so um, <clears throat> being wise will help us to also be judicious. Judicious means well thought out. You know, when you think about a judge, they're executing justice and judgments and and so in order to do that effectively, you have got to, they have got to think things out, think the case out well. They just can't be quick in making a decision. They've got to think it out well. And if we're going to be wise with our resources, we have to be the same way. We have to think, the, uh, our, think through the process and the steps well. Don't rush to make a decision. Think about every angle of how we can utilize and maximize and have leftovers with regard to the resource. Now, that was our definitions of how, of what it means to be wise. You're intelligent. I mean, you're not acting like a dumb, uneducated person. You're going to be intelligent, careful, far-sighted, and well thought out. And those are the principles that we need to execute in being wise with our resources. Now, what is a resource? Most of us think money, true. Um, our resources, yeah, money, income, it's possessions, the things that you have in your house, any wealth that you may have, resources is property and goods and supplies. You know, resources is just basically stuff. So what are you doing with the stuff that God has blessed you with? First of all, are you taking care of it? If he's giving you a car, are you taking care of that car? Are you providing the proper maintenance to that car, to your house that he's blessed you with? Are you keeping it clean? Are you making sure that various maintenance that needs to be done on a regular basis is being done? What about the money that God has blessed you with? Are you splurging and spending it on unnecessary things? Are you saving a portion of it, giving a portion of it? What are you doing? Are you budgeting your money that, that God has blessed you with? Or are you just living um, by ha happenstance? You're just living in a mode of whatever happens, happens. Or are you a person that budgets and plans things out, project? You know, these are some questions to really think about. Are you training your children how to be wise with their resources? You know, you can always tell with you can go in, uh, to a person's house. You can sit and go and sit in their car, you know, and you can tell a lot about a person. You can tell whether they're keeping in uh, good watch and care over the resources that God has given them. You know, if you're not, then don't expect to get more. You know, it's just like a parent. You're not going to give a child who's irresponsible and don't take care of anything you give them. They're always losing something or giving it away. If you have a child like that, you're not going to give them anything. Or if you do, it's going to be something cheap because you know more than likely they're going to lose it. You know, if we want to have increase and surplus in our lives, God is looking at how we're managing what we already have. You know, some of us may be thinking, well, I don't have much. I don't have much money. I don't have very much good. I don't have a whole lot of stuff. Well, whatever it is that you have. Take care of it. Take good care of it. You know, don't misuse it. All right. The next thing I want to talk on is how to be resourceful. I went through some examples of things that we could do. Because I know a lot of times, you know, young people, you out, you're working, you're making money, and if you're not – uh, careful, you will mismanage that money and those resources. And now is a critical time for you to be really learning how to manage resources, money-wise, position-wise, 
furniture-wise, automobile-wise, just taking care of your everyday business. And this is one area where a lot of parents sometimes fail to properly train young people in this area. And, and believe it or not, there are many adults who still don't know how to be wise with their resources. But I tried to go through and come up with some examples and some tips on how to be resourceful with uh, the things that God has given you. For example, let's take the gas in your car. When you uh, put gas in your car, do you fill it up or do you just put just enough in there to get you where you're going and then the next day you put in some more gas in there and then the next day some more and some more? Okay, that's not being wise, okay? Or are you the type of person who don't plan out your trips? You know, you just... You you get in your car, you go into the grocery store, then you're coming back home. Then you realize that you need to stop by the post office. Okay, well, you passed the post office when you came home, and now you remember you need to go by the post office, so now you got to get back in your car and drive to the post office. Okay, that is an example of not being wise with your resources. If you plan your car trip, then you would have stopped by the post office on your way from your first errand. Be the type of person who tries to cover ground that's in the area that you're traveling in so that you're not wasting gas, ripping and running and passing up stops, you know, and then having a double back because you didn't have your trip plan. So that's one way to be wise with your resources. Let's take grocery shopping. You know, if you're going to uh, be wise with your groceries, you've got to – Take a look, first of all, at the sales ad. See what's on sale. Then come up with a menu of those items that are on sale that you could use in your menu. Then after that, you get your grocery list together. After you've decided, kind of got an idea of what it is you need and what you want to cook and what's on sale. Pull out coupons. Get your Sunday paper and clip coupons. Watch the ones that come in the mail. If you see the ones coupons for items that you use, then clip those. And then you're going to cook meals that stretch. You're going to devise a menu that has meals in it that will stretch. For example, you could say on Sunday I'm going to cook spaghetti, garlic bread, and salad. Okay, well, spaghetti is a meal that will last two to three days if you cook, you know, an, enough of it. Okay, that right there is going to help your grocery bill to stretch so that you don't have to go to the store the grocery store as much because you have cooked those meals that stretch. Okay, that's an example of how to use your grocery resources. What about your automobile? Okay, let's say you want to go purchase a new car. Well, I would recommend first you determine a budget. How much can you afford? What is your budget for a new car? Research the price of that car. Research the pros and cons of that car. What is, what is the gas mileage of the car? What are the repair costs? You know, look at the reviews online and look at the typical repairs that have been reported for that particular car that you're interested in. Research the dealership to see if they have any buyer programs or incentives, rebates. If you're a first-time car buyer, a lot of times they have a first-time uh, buyer program where they will help you with down payment money. Call your insurance company and find out how much it's going to cost you every month or every six months to have auto insurance on this particular automobile. That way you'll know whether or not you can truly afford to pay for this car or to have this car. Sales tax. Find out how much the sales tax is. Check on your credit. And if you're going to buy a car, shop your um, car loan or shop it. In other words, let the credit union look at it and see what kind of rate they can give you. And that way it will ensure that you get the best interest rate if you know that you're a person who has a pretty decent credit score. And another thing, don't let the dealership run your credit report several hundred times and cause your credit score to drop. If they have to run it that many times, that's a sign that you don't need that car because evidently a lot of the, uh, the loan companies are, don't trust you as a risk as far as having a loan on it. Let's look at college tips on how to be resourceful. When you're going to college, don't get into student loan debt. First, research the courses that you need to take to get the degree that you want to get. 
look for apply for grants if you qualify research scholarships this is one area where a lot of young people for some reason i think they just sometimes may be lazy and just don't want to do the work to search for scholarships but go out there and search those scholarships don't let that free money go unused look for uh, intern uh, opportunities look for work study uh, programs and then you know, get on a payment plan with the school where you put down so much money and then you make a payment every month. You know, it's okay for you to work a part-time job and go to college because that way it will help you to not have to get in debt as far as with the student loan. The next thing I want to ask you, do you have a budget? If you don't get a budget, figure out how much income you have in, write out what are your monthly expenses, and that way you can document where your financial resources are going. Do you buy on sale? If you don't, I'm encouraging to you to buy on sale. Buy according to certain seasons. Uh, we know that in the fall, that's the best time to buy summer clothes, and in the summer is the best time to buy uh, spring and winter clothes because they mark them down. Pay attention, and another good thing is to subscribe to a lot of your favorite stores. Send them your email, and that way they'll send you an email of when they're having a, a phenomenal sale, and that way you can buy your clothes at a sale price. I know that's what I do, and I usually buy my clothes 40 to 50% off. I buy when it's on sale, so you do the same, and then you will begin operating and being wise with your resources. Now, there are certain things that I recommend you can buy at a yard sale, a state sale, and thrift stores, such as different items you may need in your house, let's say like a color printer or if you want a, a certain p a particular cell phone or a particular house phone or if you have want a piece of furniture. Those are things that you can buy at yard sales, estate sales, and thrift stores. Always look for freebies, too. Free is one of my favorite words next to Friday. <laughs> and so look for the the freebies and go get them. I know Kroger is always downloading free coupons on Friday. Take advantage of that. My next tip of being wise with your resources is save, save, save. Even if it's just $5, it will add up. Save those nickels and dimes and those pennies and those quarters. Hey, the other thing, pay by layaway. Pay cash. Don't go get credit cards. Put that stuff in the layaway or just save the money and up the, for the item you're trying to get and then go purchase it. The next thing, learn how to do some things for yourself. Learn how to change your own oil. Learn how to put your own wind, uh, window wiper blades on your car. Learn how to sew or hem and take up paying. Those are different ways where you can learn to do it yourself and it will save you money and help you to be resourceful. And one way to do it yourself, you know what, through Google, YouTube. Go out there and research how to repair something, how to do something. And a lot of times those videos on YouTube will walk you through it, uh, and it will show you how to do it. I know someone who had a flat screen TV that went out, and they didn't want to pay the money to get it repaired. You, but you know what they did? They figured out which part they needed. They Googled it on, and saw on YouTube, and someone put a video out there showing them how to replace that item in the TV on YouTube, and this person did that, and they fixed their own TV. So those are examples of how to be wise with your resources. Another way is to buy in bulk. Light bulbs, paper towels, toilet tissue, soap, those are things you know you're going to use over and over and over. So whenever they're on sale, go ahead and buy them in bulk and stock up because it's not like it's going to go to waste. You're going to use it. Learn which off-brand products are good ones. Now, we know all off-brand products are not good. However, there are some out there that are really good, and the price is good as well. So learn. Begin to test and try out the off-brand products. The ones that are just as good as the name brand, those are the ones I recommend you purchase because you'll save money. Another way to be resourceful with your, your resources is learn a new skill or develop your talent. If you have a skill in fixing computers, then you can begin to make money off of that. If you know how to sew and take up him, you know what? You can make money off of that. If you got your real estate license, you have opened up another source of income 
that can bring more money in your house. So learn a new skill, one in which you can turn around and make money off of it. Now, the next time you spend some money, I want you to think about it. I want you to be conscious of whether or not you're being wise. Think about it long term. Think about it with regard to is this a need or is this a want. Think about it, is this something that I can put on layaway or is this something I can find at a yard sale, thrift store. Think about it. Think about when is the season to buy it. Those are ways that you can be wise with your resources. Most people don't think about it, though. And as I said earlier, most people don't think of how to be resourceful until they're in a situation where their funds are low. And that's when you have to become really, really creative in how you can come up with whatever it is you're trying to get. So use that same principle when you are getting ready to spend money. Act as if you don't have it and you're trying to figure out how you can make it happen in the most efficient and economical way. Look for resources that benefit you. When I say that, I mean even when you select your job, is it a job that will benefit you? When you select in the church, is it a church that will benefit you, your relationships and friendships? Will it benefit you? Do you look for connections that are also not just a connection but a resource? For example, if you are in a you know in a relationship and you know you tend to need repairs and you want to be able to save money, then you might need to try to seek out someone or, or who is very handy, you know how to fix stuff, who knows how to change the oil in the car. You may be a person who likes to eat, but you're not a good cook. Then your ideal person would be a person who loves to cook. So that's my example of what I mean when I say that look for the resource benefit in your job, your church, your relationships, your friendships, even in the neighborhood that you live in. You know, is it a neighborhood that's close to your job? Well, that's a resource because it's going to save you gas. These are creative ways on how to be resourceful, but we have to sit down and think. Now, we don't want to be wasteful. To waste means to misuse, squander, to be fruitless, unproductive, and unsuccessful. Who would have thought that waste will cause you to be unsuccessful? Well, it will because you're basically unproductive. You're not thinking. You're not figuring out ways to stretch and to sustain your money and to have surplus with your resources. You know, it's easy to waste. Waste keeps us struggling because we're not thinking. We're just spending. And when you're not thinking, you're not planning, you're not preparing, and you're not prospering. And so that's why it's absolutely critical and necessary that we become wise, conscious when it comes to our resources. In the Bible, there are several examples that I want to touch on quickly. There are examples of folks who were resourceful. Gideon, he was resourceful in that he used clay pots and trumpets in a way that made such a loud sound until it scared the enemy. Jesus was resourceful in how he used what he had, which was two fish and five loaves of bread, and it fed 5,000 people. Elisha and the widow's oil is another example of how the widow uh, was in a situation where her husband, a prophet, had died, and the creditor was coming to take her son. But she went to Elijah, and he asked her, what does she have in her house? You know, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. What do I have in my house that I could use to help me to be more resourceful? We all have something in our house. If we really sit down and think hard enough that we could use to help us to be resourceful. Uh, she began to go and collect pots. All she had was oil. Well, she had something. She went and collected pots and bottles, and that oil just filled up those pots and bottles and it wouldn't run out until she ran out of containers to put it in. Samson, he used boxes and torches and the jawbone of a donkey. You know, he didn't have no uh, shotgun and a fancy weapon. He used the resource that he had, and God blessed him to have victory. Ruth is another example of resourcefulness. She was picking up 
to drop corn after it had been harvested. And because she was out there using her resources, going behind gleaning, Boaz saw her and favored her because he saw her trying to be resourceful and out there trying to just work and, and come up with some food to take care of her and her mother-in-law. So you don't have to have a whole lot to be resourceful, but in your being resourceful with that little, God will come and touch your your resources and cause it to grow and to multiply into the point where you will have surplus. But we've got to be conscious and not uh, full of pride to the point we won't even use what we have, no matter how small or great it is. Use your resources to the best of your ability, and God will bless you with more. There are also a couple of examples of those in the Bible who wasted or who was wasteful. We all know about the prodigal son. He did not demonstrate resourcefulness, but he wasted his inheritance. He wanted it early, and when he got it, he didn't even know what to do with it. You know why? He didn't have any wisdom in how to handle and manage his resources, and as a result, he went bankrupt, broke, was in the pig's pen, and came back home, you know, hungry and smelling bad and everything else because he wasted his resources. Another example of wasting your resources is the example of the foolish servant in the parable of the talent. You remember one of the servants, he buried his talent, and he ended up losing the one talent that he had. So those are examples of how God does not like it when we waste, but he loves it when we're able to cherish and see the beauty and even the smallest of a resource. And when he begins to see that we're going to try to work with what we have, be thankful and grateful for what we have, giving him praise for what we have, even though it may be a small and seem like it's insignificant. If you will just use what you have and take good care of it, then God will bless you with increase, and he will bless you to have surplus, and you will become one of those servants that he will be pleased with because you learn the value of how to be wise with your resources. Well, this has been my time. This has been a Teachable Life moment with Keila Bryson where it is absolutely imperative that you live live. If you would like to connect with me, you may do so. I'm on Facebook at Keila Bryson, Teachable Life Moments, LLC, at Twitter at Keila Savant, or you can visit my website at KeilaBryson.com. If you would like to direct message me, do so. My email address is Keeler at KeelerBryson.com. Well, guys, I will see you guys back here next Monday, the same place, same time. Have an awesome week.